Hey, howdy. Hi, hello, everyone. I thought I'd say Ohio as well. Well, what are we looking at? We're actually looking at a self-portrait. If you squint really, really hard, you still won't be able to see us. But this is a representation of a tiny fraction of the universe. Yes, the universe looks a lot like slime mold. It looks like neurons in our brain. It looks like so many things. The universe, it turns out, is connection. Now, this seems like a funny thing to talk about in a social studies course, but it isn't. Remember, we are stuff. We are matter. You matter, and we are matter. And that matter has energy flowing through it. And we can measure that matter, and we can measure that energy flowing through matter in such a way uh, that we can understand more about the universe through that thing we call information. So we've got this matter, this energy, and this information flowing through the universe that is us. And so understanding our place within this universe isn't a really important thing to understand because it puts human experience and even the experience of the Earth itself in its proper context. There are eight concepts we're going to really learn about this year. Don't worry, there's no quiz on this yet, but these eight concepts will be driving every lesson we do. We'll be looking at the deepest of time, understanding how far back our civilization goes and the matter, energy, and information that make us, well, it all happened because the universe is here in the first place. So we have to look at the deep time. We have to look at continuity and change. We have to look at connection. We have to look at common unity, our community. We have to look at culture, colonialism, and then two things. Iteration, which is a fancy pants but accurate word for repetition, and reconfiguration, which is another word for transformation. Everything we're going to be studying this year can be represented by the symbol you see on the right, the yellow, the blue, and the red. Deep time of the yellow circle contains continuity change, connection, common unity, culture, and colonialism, and driving everything forward is iteration and reconfiguration. Today, the tiny little red line in the center of this image, we're going to be looking through the lens of the universe itself. So let's set up the boundaries. Let's, you know, look at the context of what we're doing. Let's draw a square around what we're studying. It's a rather large square, 14 billion years. Actually, it's 13.8 billion years, but we won't tell anybody. So we're looking at the universe as it relates to Earth itself, how our planet, how this planet came to be. Now, we're going to be using the cosmic calendar. We're going to be pretending that we can smash down the 14 billion years of the universe down to 365 days that we're familiar with. On January 1st, the Big Bang occurs. It takes all the way till August 31st for our sun to be born, which is kind of crazy. And humans, at the very, 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 very last 15 seconds of December 31st at 11.59 p.m. and 45 seconds, that's when humans came around. We are new, baby. We're brand new to the universe, and we haven't been around that long. We're not even out of the womb yet. So let's keep that in mind as we study our story of humanity, which began January 1st, 13.8 billion years ago. The Big Bang, we could have called it Fred and Wilma. We could have called it, I don't know, Rick and Morty. Uh, we don't know what caused it, but we do know, and our math and our physics are actually pretty accurate. We can know what had happened up to, I think, about a three millionths of a second after it occurred. Anything before that, our understanding of how things occurred breaks down. But we can actually pretty much run the simulation and get basically what we have today, just using our understanding of physics. So 13.8 billion years ago. Obviously, we weren't here. Uh, the Dark Ages happened after that, two to 300 million years of energetic expansion. It was so energetic. There was so much energy in the universe. There was no light. Just pure energy expanding out at the speed of light. 
maybe even faster. We're not really sure what happened. TMZ and Entertainment Tonight didn't get started until much later. Uh, so our, our framework today is looking from January 1st to December 31st at 11.59.59 p.m. In other words, this present moment. So, the first thing that happened, all that energy, we, we call today the cosmic microwave background. Everywhere a radio telescope looks, there's this little fuzz in the background. That's the cosmic microwave background. It's remarkable uh, that we were able to discover it. We actually figured this out by accident. We were looking uh, at using radar to find planes coming in, um, you know, enemy planes coming in. We had developed radar, and everywhere they pointed the radar dish, they got this little fuzz, this buzzing. And they thought there was something wrong with their machine, but there wasn't. It was literally the universe singing to us. Okay, metaphorically, the universe was singing to us, but it was <laughs> pushing out an energy from the beginning of time. And we discovered it by accident. That was, you know, a lot of science seems to work that way. And the first time that energy came through, it took till January 10th. That's insane. It took 10 cosmic days for all of that uh, energy to finally be visible to our instruments, okay? Even in my lifetime, I just want you guys to really understand this. Um, by January 13th, the universe was hopping. What you're seeing is actually three different cameras looking at the universe. On the left, we see Kobe 92, which was actually launched when I was your age, actually, now that I think about it. And that was the first picture, kind of like the early... Uh, cell phone camera pictures taken by your folks and the videos they're really badly resoluted uh, they have really bad resolution excuse me and um kind of fuzzy well by 2013 we got a better picture got a much much more accurate assessment of how the universe uh at its earliest stages looked that's about 13.7 billion years well Almost immediately, groups of galaxies started forming, and those galaxies were really close together at first. I want to give you an idea of how big this uh, depiction is. This is obviously not a real picture. It's a, an artist's representation. But it's accurate, because each of those little tiny, tiny, tiny dots you see, each of them is a galaxy, each of them with 100 million or more stars, each of them with trillions of planets, each dot is a galaxy itself. Our galaxy is within that little red dot at the right, okay? Those giant groups of, um, you know, galaxies formed together into these almost like little rivers um, uh, of impossibly large <laughs> distance. And as time has gone on, they get further and further and further away from each other. Um, the Virgo Serpent Cluster is a group of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of galaxies. In fact, you still can't even see our galaxy inside of this because there's so many. There's thousands upon thousands of galaxies just in this group. We got to zoom in further. We get to the Virgo cluster, which is 1,300 galaxies. Oh my gosh, there's so much. And I don't know what this looks like, but it looks just cool. That's why it's here. Our local group <laughs> really started to form about March 15th, the Ides of March. Our local group, 54 galaxies, all formed at about the same time. The Milky Way is one of them. It's 13.4 billion years ago. Take or, uh, you know, add 800 million years, we won't tell. Well, the Milky Way, again, March 15th, really got started. Now, we don't know what the Milky Way looks like because we're inside of it. You can't take a picture of the Milky Way if you're inside of it. And we don't have any kind of machines uh, in existence as humans that can get outside of the universe to take a pic. So we think it looks something like it is on the left, but the only vision we really have of the Milky Way is what we see on the right. Yeah, that's a real picture. Yes, the night sky actually does look like that. When you're far enough from city lights and headlights and far enough from flashlights and campfires, the sky is that beautiful. We are part of that beauty, and that beauty is part of us. Well, about 4.063 billion years ago, August 34, 34, 31st, the solar system was born. The enriched guts of huge, supermassive stars exploded. Their, in, their, their pieces, their matter and energy came together through gravity to form our sun. It took 
another 15 days for the solar system to configure itself into something even resembling what we have today. Again, it took, uh, well, from 4.063 billion years ago, 4.5 billion, took about a half a billion years to even come into its um, current state. Now, I want you to look. Look at the solar system. It looks like it's, it's you know, drunk or, or, or tilted. But this is actually the way our solar system moves through the galactic plane. It moves in this unbelievably interesting spiral. The sun moves, but it also kind of twists around because it gets tugged on by the other planets. And the other planets get tugged on by the sun and by the interstellar winds and gravity and the dark matter that's out there. Again, I just thought this is the coolest thing, realizing we're kind of surfing through the universe as we move through um, space on this little tiny speck of dust. Well, the heliosphere is the extent, is basically like the fart cloud of the sun. All of the energies coming off of the sun go out to a certain amount of space. Um, again, this was forming at the time. It protects us from the huge amount of energy coming out of the galactic center. And these winds actually blow back the worst of that energy and make life on Earth, in part, possible. So thank you for solar farts. Um, I really want us to understand just how insignificant we are, how tiny we are. If the solar system, take your arms, okay? S sit up where you are. Take your arms out left to right. And that's a, probably a little less than one and a half meters, a little less than a yard and a half. But let's just pretend the sun's about that big. And you stood in the center of Jimmy Carter's C, D, and E halls, okay? That little round area where there's the tree. If that is the size of the sun, if you have the sun in your arms, uh, if you're cold, this is a, an advantage. If you have the sun in your arms, basically Neptune's orbit goes all the way from Truman Middle School all the way to the Walmart at I-40 and Coors. And most of that is just empty space. Earth itself isn't even factored in yet. Again, Neptune's orbit. Oh my gosh. Walmart Supercenter to Truman Middle School. It's huge. And remember, at this scale, the sun is only the size of the width of your arms. The Earth's orbit barely gets the Los Balcanes. That's how big the universe is. And by the way, at this scale, the Earth is a small marble. We are truly, beautifully unique and insignificant in this universe. Inner planets all happen inside that little blue circle. Remember, all these blue lines around everything? They hide videos. Okay, it's not hidden, but if you want to see more about this stuff, like how this particular map was made, that's actually real. That's not computer generated. Some dudes actually built the solar system in the middle of the desert, which is cool. So, um, you see that little blue dot? If you didn't, follow the arrow. That's, that's us. Everybody who's ever lived and loved on this planet, every war, every angry argument, they all happened on that little blue dot. And that's what Earth looks like from Saturn. From Saturn. It's not even the furthest out in our solar system. This is an actual photo taken by the Cassini, or I believe by the Cassini mission, that actually just, they just took the satellite and had it dive into the atmosphere of Saturn to make sure it broke up. Um, it wouldn't contaminate any other of the uh, any of Saturn's moons with any of our DNA, and so we wouldn't interrupt the um, evolution of possible life on a couple of the, their satellites, a couple of their moons. Um, but yeah, this is a real photo. That's that's Earth, a little tiny speck of dust, stuck in a moonbeam, stuck in a sunbeam. Excuse me. That's all we are. Everything. We're beautiful and insignificant. A mote of dust hanging in the expanse of nothingness. This is a picture of Earth, the first one taken from another body in the solar system. One of the Apollo missions, which my father-in-law was involved in quite uh, intensely. He was the head of communications and safety, uh, Joe Jose Lopez. They took this picture. The NASA astronauts took their camera, pointed it out the window, and while they were going around the moon, found the Earth for the first time. 
This is when my father was a little younger, a little older than you guys. It was that recent that we finally left Earth. Now, we can leave Earth in other ways. And this is the beauty of it. We are the universe that builds machines to understand the universe. And that's kind of cool. This is the James Webb Space Telescope. It's not in outer space yet, but it should be in the next few years. It is the most amazing instrument I think we have ever built. Although the CERN Super Collider um, in France and Switzerland might be just as cool, if not cooler. Um, this is going to go into space and it's going to help us see back in wavelengths of light to the edge of the universe. <laughs> Which... I don't even understand what that means, but I know it's cool. And we're going to learn so much from it. Well, not only do we have those kinds of telescopes, we have telescopes that are the third the size of the planet. The NAT Globally Network Telescope is a bunch of telescopes working together, just like people working together can do better things. Telescopes working to, uh, together can do better things. The Fast Radio Telescope in China. Thank goodness we have that. Arecibo in Puerto Rico just collapsed from uh, the damage it received in a couple of hurricanes. It was the biggest, and now the fast radio telescope is the biggest on the planet. The Chinese built this radio telescope to see as close to the edge of the universe as we can from the Earth's surface. Now, the Hubble telescope, oh my gosh, we used to call it the toilet in space because it kind of looks like a, you know, a commode. It looks like a toilet. But that little hatch is what allows the light in and allows us to see what is out there in a, well, at a resolution we haven't ever seen before. The James Webb Telescope is going to be hundreds of times clearer. So who knows what we're going to find with that one. And all of this happened from this little pale blue dot in the sky. The universe somehow created life on Earth and allow us to see itself through a different pair of eyes. And that is a most astounding fact. Next time, we're going to be discussing how life began on Earth. Spoiler alert, we don't know exactly, but we know a lot. See you next time.